In this video, I'm going to uh, describe and demonstrate how to calculate the present value of annuities. And an annuity is a payment of a predetermined amount made at regular intervals. Notice that I don't say that it's a fixed amount because one of the annuities we're going to look at is a, a growing payment annuity where we expect the payments to grow over time like you would expect for, for example, a retirement program where my pay is increasing every year and so my contributions to that 401k or IRA should also be growing over time. For the present value of a finite annuity, we have this formula. C stands for cash flow or payment. R is the discount rate and N is the number of payments for that annuity. For the growing annuity, G is the growth rate. So that's the growth rate in the payment we're going to put in. And for a finite infinite annuity, also known as perpetuity, we have a fixed payment of C. We're going to divide that by the discount rate R to find out the payment. So now I'm going to switch over to the spreadsheet that we'll be using. Uh, this is the financial function spreadsheet. And we're going to look at each of the problems that we've just talked about. Um, we're going to look at both annual payments and then also for the fixed payment, we're going to look at a monthly payment. This is a, a very common type of annuity with a monthly payment. Think of your home loan, think of your car loan, any kind of payments you're going to make on a monthly basis would be a monthly fixed annuity. So for our first Example here, we're going to look at the present value of a finite annuity, fixed payment, and these are going to be annual payments. So I want to find out if I'm going to make $1,000 payments for 20 years, paid at the end of the period. These are regular annuities, not annuity dues. And my discount rate is 8%. To find the present value of my annuity, I can use the formula that we just looked at, which would be our payment multiplied by one minus, and then I put another open parentheses, one divided by one plus our discount rate, raised to the number of payments, then two closed parentheses, and then the denominator, if you look back on the slide would be our discount rate of 8%. And that gives me a value of $9,818.15. Now, that's kind of a mess to put in there. So it's much easier to use our present value function in Excel. So here we have equals present value, our rate. You'll notice here that I have a common then rate just to tell you which of the variables that is. So our rate is 8%. Our number of payments is 20. Our payment is 1,000. Uh, because we want to see what the present value is in a positive number, we want to make that negative 1,000, so we want to change the sign on that. We have no future value. This is a regular annuity, so our type would be equal to zero, so we don't need to put that in here. If we wanted to, we could just put comma zero, comma zero, if you want to fill that out and we get the same answer. For our second problem, I like to include the monthly payment in here because this is a mistake that a lot of people make. In the functions for Excel, if you have a monthly payment and an annual discount rate, you need to change that rate to reflect a monthly interest rate. Or if you have a quarterly payment, you want to, you want to change the rate based on that, that the number of payments per year. So using the formula, the same formula we have up here, we want to, We also want to make the change in the interest rate in the formula. So here I'm going to put equals, and again, our periodic payment is 350, multiplied by 1 minus, and then again, open parentheses, 1 divided by 1 plus, and here I'm going to make a, a little bit of a change. I'm going to take my 
discount rate, I'm going to divide that by 12 to make it a monthly rate. And then I'm going to raise that to the power of the total number of payments. So this represents five years. So 60 payments is 12 times 5. And then I'm going to put two closed parentheses. And it's very important in these functions. And later on, when we convert these functions into visual basic code uh, to create our own um, Excel functions, we want to make sure we have the right number of parentheses. And that's, that's a place where a lot of people make pro uh, have problems. Then I'm going to divide that by 8%. Again, divide by 12 to turn that into a monthly interest rate. I get a value of $17,261.45. Using the present value function in Excel, I can put equals PV. My rate, again, is 0.08 divided by 12. My number of periods is 60. My payment, again, I'm going to change the sign here because I'd like to see a, a positive number. We're going to change this in the future where we might want to have a negative number to reflect a negative or a cash outflow um, as our payments. But for now, um, we, we'd like to see a, a positive outcome for our present value. Our future value is zero. Our type is zero. And again, we get the same answer of $17,261.45. The next problem there is isn't an Excel function for, so we're just going to use the formula presented in the PowerPoint slide. It's a little bit more complicated, just to review that quickly. It looks like this, where in, in the case of the fixed payment, we had a one in the numerator in this part of the problem. In this case, we have one plus the growth rate. In the, in the denominator, Instead of an R, we have an R minus the growth rate, or a discount rate minus the growth rate. So our formula here is to say that our first payment is $50,000 multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus the growth rate. divided by 1 plus the discount rate. And then notice that I have parentheses surrounding that portion of the equation. And then here's where I'm going to raise that all to the power of n number of payments, or 20 payments. Close parentheses. And then I'm going to put in my denominator. of R, my discount rate, minus my growth rate. And I get a value of $654,099.68. Finally, I'm looking at the present value of an infinite annuity or a perpetuity. And what this is, is I expect to get this payment forever. I, the most common example of this is what we see is a preferred stock. So a preferred stock has a fixed dividend with, with no maturity date. And so a, one way to value a preferred stock is to take that fixed payment, and discount it back to today at the current required rate of return for preferred stock or preferred equity for a firm. And the way to do that is to use this perpetuity formula. It's very simple. We take the payment, we divide it by the discount rate. And so that finishes up the discussion of the present value of annuities.